There's somebody who lives in Baltimore. I'll tell you a story. I don't know if I want to use the name. You have a question. Go ahead. I'll ask the story. So. After the story? <laughs> you know, everybody, you know, There's a fellow who lives in Baltimore. I spoke at a good convention. It's a national convention, 1994. And I said, if you really, really believe in God, you will get what you want. Right? I told... Uh, can I tell a story about... Uh, can't tell me, I won't mention names, okay? Huh? Baby? I don't know what baby. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you a story about this young lady sitting over here, my daughter in law. She was married for a while, right? Over two years? She didn't have a child. So I go usually to uh, Rabbi Shalom and your high, I like Baomer, where they have a bonfire, half a million people come. And I prayed, I prayed, I wanted to have a baby. Okay, so she became expectant. Due date was like Balmer, the same day of, that we celebrated Rabbi Shalom Yechai. There's one in 365 days of a chance of that happening, right? The next year, she's due like Balmer. I said, I have to go to the rabbi. I say, thank you to Hashem, thank you to Rabbi Shalom Yechai. should all light a candle at night like Balmer. It's a good thing. Right, thank you. And my daughter says, how can you leave your daughter-in-law? She's having a baby, and in the Syrian tradition, they will call the baby in your name if it's a boy. All right, I said, I don't know. So we are getting closer to the day of like, well, I really, really <coughs> wanted to go to Israel again. We're getting closer. I told my daughter, I'll ask my daughter-in-law. She said, what do you think your daughter-in-law is going to tell you? She said, go. Of course she's going to tell you to go, but she shouldn't go. Got very close to the date. I said, I'm not a mohel and I'm not a doctor. And she told me she's going to have a girl. Okay, she thinks. This was, what, uh, 18 years ago? So I went. I went two nights. One night I was at the hotel. One night I was at Rabbi Shimon. And I said, thank you. And I prayed for my daughter to have a child. So I came back after like my Omer. Two day, was it two days after? Two days. Two days after I got Omer, my grandson was born. It was a boy, not a girl. My name. We had a beautiful Mila Memorial Day weekend. I was just with him, spent the Shabbat with him. Like my Omer baby. I prayed for my daughter. She became expectant, and due date next year was like my Omer. That's one of 700 chance. I was in Toronto a couple of years back. And there was a fellow there, my friend, is a lawyer. And he tells me, he says, uh, his daughter had miscarriages. She hadn't had a child in eight years. I said, I'm going to go like Baumer. <laughs> right? Take a CD of mine about positive thinking. Tell her to have positive thinking. She'll have a baby. I didn't say like Baumer. I said, have a baby. I went to pray. They called me. She's expecting. Wow, okay. And the doctor says, do date? Like Baumer. Then they called back. No, the doctor made a mistake. It's not like Baumer. I said, I'm okay. As long as it's a healthy baby. I got a call, I was in Israel, like my mama as usual. I went 18 years in a row, by the way, since my grandson was born. And uh, I got a call, unlike Baumer, the baby was born, unlike Baumer, I came the week later for the baby. One out of a thousand. Here? Yeah? That's sorry. There's the a fellow in Baltimore. The real story is good. Which ones are this one? Oh, that's good. Thank you, my wife. It's good to have my wife here. Uh, if you don't have batahon, you'll never be happy in your marriage. Never. Maybe my wife is not exactly the way I want. If you believe in God, he gave you this lady because that's what you need. Nothing else. So she wants me to tell her, whatever you say, I always listen to my wife. I'm afraid of I mean, no. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Okay, sometimes. Anyway, publicly we listen to, listen to this story. I had a lady who came to me, and she says she's divorced. She has three kids, doesn't know how to make a living. I, I don't forget you have a question. I'm going to take a question and answer the story. She can't make a living. I'm going to ask the question. Well, I forgot the question. Why forget the question? Huh? So, so she says she doesn't know what to do. People are telling her to either sell life insurance or real estate. She doesn't know. She wants me to answer life insurance or real estate. I say, uh, I, I don't know, life insurance or real estate. I tried to know a little rabbinics, thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
me. So, I said, I don't know, but I know if you pray to God, He will guide you. Pray to Him and tell Him, I know you're going to show me the way. I know you're going to show me. You. Call me when you get an answer. So a little while later, the lady calls me. She was not a religious woman. She calls me. She says, God answered me. I said, Debbie, that's her real name. <coughs> Debbie, I said, tell me exactly what happened. She said, I was driving in Brooklyn on Ocean Parkway. Anybody knows Ocean Parkway? Major road in Brooklyn. I was driving, and I was praying to God. I was, when you pray, by the way, it's not just when you're in shul, when you say the Yishmane Esra. You can pray to God anytime, all the time. Talk to Him. You get up at night, you wash your hands. Talk to Him. He loves you. He loves hearing from you. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. My Father, help me. I love you. I need you. Again and again and again. He doesn't, he doesn't mind if you nag Him. I told her, nag Him. <laughs> so she was uh, driving an ocean park and she says to God, I need an answer. I want to know real estate or life insurance. And she tells God, you know, I'm not too smart. You didn't create me too smart. I don't want a mixed up, her word was garbled message, mixed up message. I want a clear answer. What should I do? And she says, I got the answer. On Ocean Parkway, a white van changed lanes right in front of me. And on the license plate, the answer was there in clear English. Life insurance. <laughs> 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 Try it. Try it and call me. I'll leave you my phone number. Call me, you'll see miracle. If you don't see a miracle, it'll be a miracle. That's a what else do you want me to do? <laughs> take take, huh? take the nearest question. <laughs> Rabbi said that uh, when uh, Hagar, you know, she filled out the bottle, she, she was in the moon, you know, so she was the lichen in the moon. Oh, so, Rabbi said that, yeah. Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi said that. Uh, so then, what is the was not the right thing to do? I mean, the person should just say, yeah, yeah, uh, come, happen, happen, happen. Your name is David. Have to put, uh, For you and me, we fill up a bottle. Hagar, who lived in Abraham, who spoke to angels on her level. So what I'm saying is, in a, nowadays, like, we need some. Fill up a bottle. Fill up a bottle. You have to know what level you are. I mean, the Ramban says, don't go to the doctor. That's on his level. On your level, my level. So I had a story. I was, um, as I began to say, 1994, I went to the Aguda Convention. And I spoke, I told a story about a woman, I don't know if anybody knows, here knows Jersey Judy. She runs, she has a radio program in New Jersey. She came to me, she's married for a while, she can have a child. So I told her to really, really count on God, you're going to have a child. So much so, go look for a crib. So, they had a lot of faith, her and her husband. I told her, of course, go to the mikveh. You, can. you want to have a child, you want to have a pure child, you don't go to the mikveh, the child is... Right? You have to go to the mikveh. Go to the mikveh, come along with me once a week, which they did. And I said, uh, go look for a crib. They didn't look for a crib. They bought a crib. I didn't tell them to buy a crib. They bought a crib. They felt, okay, God, the rabbi says you're going to have a baby. I'm buying a crib, okay? And they came every night, once a week to learn. One night they couldn't come. It was their anniversary. They came the next night. And I said, when, when she becomes expecting, call me. So I see him on Rosh Hashanah. This was three months later. And he says to me, the Torah was coming out, the shul was packed with people. He says, I didn't tell my mother. Her husband, Mark, tells me. But Judy is expecting. I started crying, of course. And um, she had a baby. I was at this girl's wedding not long ago. Uh, so I just spoke to him uh, a couple of days ago. So I told the story at the Aguda Convention. It's a national convention. There was somebody there from Baltimore. I won't mention his name. And um, he tells me he's married 11 years. He can't have a child. I said, if you really, really believe, as long as it's not a medical impossibility, a miracle, you'll have a child this year. <coughs> I'll give you a mazel tov right now. <laughs> He said, well, a learned person, a wonderful, wonderful person. So I said, I showed him in my book, that what he thinks the book says is not true. 
He wanted to borrow my book, and I'm my books, so like, you know, I have notes, I have my tools, and I don't mind that my books. So he insisted, he said, I'll give it back, he wants to borrow my book, okay. I lent him my book, I wrote my name in it, and uh, I said, call me when she's expecting. 11 years, she didn't have a child. He said, I'll call you if she's expecting. I said, I don't say if, I said when. <laughs> call me. Now I'm waiting, I had to have it within three months, it takes nine months to have a baby, and I told him this year, and uh, he called me. I was ready to hear. He said, no, he wants to keep my book for a while. I said, I need my book back. He said, go find it. I go start to give back. Okay. And he happened. And I'm waiting. I'm thinking, you know, I can't be, but the hell works. Eleven months later, I get a call. I saved it on my voicemail as long as the voicemail lasted, for, for years. He says, this is so-and-so. I'm not going to mention his name. Somebody, uh, some of you may know. This is so-and-so. I'm calling our with good news. I called him right back. I was told he was going to tell me his wife is expecting. What else? Eleven months later, okay, but we thought three months, eleven months. I called him and said, Mazel tov. He says, the Mila is going to be, the bris is going to be on Wednesday, and I got your room in the Hilton Hotel in Baltimore. <laughs> I said, no, I pay for my own room. I'm going to bring my whole family. Bring my whole family. It was a nor'easter, it was, we drove through, and the kids were off that day because we had in-service training in the school. I brought my whole family, which one of the big shuls over here, Beit Phil, I don't know if you were there? Yeah. yeah? I spoke over there about the, he, he said he had a, he says he had a bottle of schnapps that his father-in-law gave him at his wedding to use at the first verse of his son, he said, I hated that bottle. I looked at it for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. so he had one child, then he had twins, he had another set of twins, he had seven children. I visited him not long ago. 